What up, HyperChange? Today we are talking about Rivian, the electric car company. Uh, the stock, I was kind of, I don't want to say a hater, but I, I was making fun of the stock when it was 100 uh, plus a share when they IPO'd about a year and a half ago, saying it's way overvalued. This is ridiculous. They've never delivered a car. Let's see if they can get their shit together um, and pull off actually building a company. I made a joke. The company's uh, price target was $4.20, or that was my price target per share. Um, when they IPO'd around 100, they even hit 180 bucks per share uh, here in the peak. But now, a year and a half later, two years later, since the IPO, uh, the company is now sitting at $23 per share. We're looking at a, a market capitalization here of about $22 billion. And we have seen incredible execution. The Rivian trucks, the R1S and the R1T are amazing products. I would say this is the first electric vehicle brand that has brought to market a product that is as compelling um, or in the same category as Tesla. Like it's a unique vehicle. It's designed from scratch, from the ground up. It's as much a tech product with software and sort of a computer on wheels as it is a car. They're going for the ele electric adventure vehicle niche. Um, I think Rivian is really onto something here and they've created a really cool brand that is resonating with people. Um, I see the trucks in the wild all the time and I think they look super badass. So I'm a really big fan of the product. But now I wanna dive into um, just beyond the car and product themselves, how has Rivian been doing? How have they been scaling since the IPO? How are they actually transitioning from raising a bunch of money and IPOing being the hottest thing uh, since sliced bread, they're gonna be the next Tesla to are they actually executing? So let's dive into the financials. Without further ado, this is the fun part. Um, I'm using Main Street data for this. You can go to MainStreetData.com slash Rivian. I'll put the link below if you want to follow along. I do have premium, but um, anyway, this is sort of like a new version of Hypercharts um, that I'm actually an investor and advisor in. It's a really cool website, so I would check it out. But anyway, let's take a look at rev revenue before we get into the profit side. Rivian has scaled very impressively. And actually, maybe before rev revenue, we'll, go, we'll take a look at production. This is quarterly vehicle production for Rivian. Um, and uh, maybe let's go with deliveries. Um, they've been scaling about the same, but just you can see, they started delivering in Q3 2021 with just 11 units, scaling in Q4 to 1,000 units, then up to 1.3 thousand, slowly making their way 6,000, 8,000, 12 or 13,000 in Q2, and then in Q3, the most recent quarter of 2023, Rivian delivered 16,000 units, which was awesome. Um, they've been upping their uh, delivery guidance for the year. So Rivian has showed continued growth in deliveries. Now, one thing that I think is interesting here is they don't break out the difference between the uh, deliveries of this Amazon delivery van and their R1S and R1T vehicles. So it's hard to know the mix of exactly how much of this is R1S and how much of this is R1T and how much of this is delivery van. So they're not breaking that out, which is interesting. They're just showing us that overall deliveries are going up. So I think... That's a little bit of a strategic move, keeping the numbers close to their vest to obfuscate maybe any sort of trends that may look bad about the demand for their original vehicles plateauing. Because if you think about it, the R1T is, I mean, it's a really, really cool car, but this is starting at like 75 or 80. Just see what a Rivian would cost here. Um, you know, $91,000 for an electric pickup truck with a tiny little bed that's not that practical. I mean, I think the hype and demand was insanely impressive for Rivian, but how practical is this? How many people need a $100,000 electric pickup? Um, I'm just not sure about it. I think the R1S has a lot more potential as sort of a rugged family car. Um, let's see what the R1S is uh, in terms of price-wise, $92,000. Um, if I go for the quad motor all wheel drive, I guess I can get the dual motor all wheel drive is only $84,000 with the large pack standard pack down to 78,000. But if you start to spec it out and I go, let's say max pack 400 uh, miles of range quad motor, all wheel drive, um, or I guess the max packs not available for that, but for large pack you know, 94,000, 97,000. So we're looking at a car that's around, you know, 85, 90, a hundred thousand dollars for these premium SUVs that are electric that look really cool. It's an amazing product, but how many are they going to sell? This is their model S and X. Um, and it's not enough to take them to profitability as we're going to see. Let's dive in to the actual data here in terms of the financials. Revenue, because of those deliveries going up, has been very impressive. 
Um, they've scaled in the most recent quarter to 1.34 billion in revenue in a single quarter. That's 1.34 billion in revenue in a single quarter. To put that in context, that's $5.36 billion run rate. So Rivian at already over a $5 billion run rate at just 22 billion in market cap. So the company's trading for only about four to five times price sales ratio. So not that high of a price sales ratio, but that's because of the profitability we'll see in a second. But revenue been scaling insanely impressive. I mean, 1.34 billion in Q3 up from 1.1 billion the quarter before, up from 600 million the quarter before that. Q3 2022 was just 536 million. So more than doubling year over year in terms of revenue, that is insanely impressive. But if we go to the gross profit of the company, this is where it's really been hurting. Rivian is not able to make money on their vehicles sold. They're losing an average of $32,000 per vehicle sold. So their gross profit uh, was they lost $500 million. And this is before any operating expenses. So Rivian cannot make money on their vehicles. This is a huge, huge issue for the company. Um, and why you'll see in a little bit, they're walking this very delicate tightrope and why the stock has done so poorly. It's normalizing in valuation, but it's also like, you know, the car and the product is amazing. And this is the big gist of the video. Product is amazing, but the financials are not. So gross profit, not really improving. I mean, we saw in 2022 hit a a billion dollar in losses and then sort of plateau around 500 million a quarter here. I don't know. If you go into their shareholder document, they're going to say that gross profit per vehicle is actually decreasing. Gross profit per unit delivered non-gap, 30,000. So for every car they sell, they, it costs them like, let's say it's a $90,000 car you buy, costs them $120,000 to build that car before paying for any other expenses. So they need a lot of work on that. The flip side of this there is this weird accounting thing going on with LCNR inventory charges, LCNRV inventory charges. So basically all of these weird inventory startup charges um, that have been happening for the company um, have been adding up and it looks like those are gonna dwindle down. So this boils down to the most interesting and important part of the whole Q3 shareholder letter that we saw, which is that Rivian is expecting a positive gross profit in sometime in 2024, next year. So that means that this number here, which is negative 500 million a quarter, is gonna revert to a positive gross profit at some point next year. That's their goal. That's a huge milestone. And I think these numbers look a lot worse than they are. The production ramp, the inventory cost, these are all lagging things. Um, and as Rivian goes forward, a lot of their conference call, if you listen to it, is all about reducing costs. So now let's go to operating income, adding in all the other expenses to actually run the company, you'll see it's even worse. And if we add in revenue, just to give you some context here, like 1.3 billion in revenue, but they lost 1.44 billion. So Rivian has been burning absurd amounts of cash. Uh, they have not shown that many improvements until profitability yet, but I think this is all slowly about to change. Rivian's gonna slowly start to show better and better gross margins, working their way towards profitability. I think there is light at the end of the tunnel, but the bottom line is we haven't seen as much of an improvement as the market wants in this operating income line. Um, still over a billion every single quarter in operating losses, and this is why the stock price has been super depressed. Now, let's scroll down to see, um, and here's the operating expenses of the company. So as you can see, the gross profit, if we dive into losses here, negative 477 million, and then another billion in expenses to just run the company. So that means in 2024, if they get to break even gross profit, and this negative 477 million goes to break even, well, you still have a billion in expenses every quarter, so you're still losing a billion in quarter uh, per quarter. So Rivian is burning like a billion a quarter, which is insane. Now, this takes us to the next phase here of their cash flow statement, and you can see uh, that free cash flow for the company actually had a huge improvement this quarter to just negative a billion. Before that, they were losing like 1.8, 1.6, 1 1.7 billion per quarter, burning 1.7 billion per quarter. That's insane. They were burning like 7 billion a year annualized, um, but now they've dropped that to just a billion dollars a quarter in burn. Um, in the most recent quarter, which is good news, but this is where the fascinating catch-22 comes in. A lot of the reason they were able to reduce their cash burn is because they're reducing capital expenditures, CapEx, investments for the future, aka money you're spending to build new factories for future growth, not affecting the operating business today, but very important for Rivian's product expansion into the R2. And so we're gonna get a little bit into that later, but basically Rivian needs to launch 
their R2, their cheaper Model Y Subaru S $50,000 car if they're ever going to make money and succeed as a company. But to launch that product, they're going to need to spend billions of dollars to ramp a factory. But because they're running low on cash and because they're burning so much money, they don't want to spend another billions up front now um, on their R2 production line. So they're telling you on the conference call and to investors, look, we're reducing our cash burn. Isn't that awesome? But what they're really doing, as you can see here with CapEx, is pulling back investments in the future down to just $190 million in Q3, the lowest since their IPO. So these capital expenditures and the free and the overall cash flow of the business is going to have to you know, balloon. They're going to be burning way more money when they want to start investing in that R2 platform. So now Rivian is walking this tightrope between having enough cash in the bank to survive, but also needing to invest cash to ramp their R2 vehicle. So if we keep scrolling down here, we can get to the balance sheet. This is what I think is very interesting. So Rivian started with 18 billion when they IPO. They had a huge mountain of cash. They were flush with cash to the 2021, you know, hype cycle and bubble. Um, I think this has been a gift and a curse. It's given them a lot of time to execute, but I actually went to visit Rivian. Uh, shout out to Sean Mitchell. We got a tour of the Rivian facility way back in the day. Um, very thankful for that. And it was really cool. But Rivian, oh my God, I got to be honest with you. It was cushy. They got fancy cold brew. They got snacks. Everybody's having a good time. They got plants at the office. You compare that with te the Tesla factory when I visited. It is cutthroat. The Tesla factory is, you know, Fremont. There was like things on the floor. It was hectic. Everybody was stressed out. Things were moving. You could tell they were hustling to make money. Rivian didn't have a care in the world. They were in la la land. They raised money during the good times. And I think that is a big reason the company is bloated. And this recession's frankly been good for them if you think about the long-term strategy of the company because they're gonna need to, to figure out how to, um, I don't know, like make money and be lean and be efficient. And so as you can see, they've been burning through this guap. They've been burning through their cash. They ended uh, September 30th, Q3 with 9.1 billion in cash down from 18 billion. So in just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven quarters, they burned through half of their cash, $9 billion. So that means another seven quarters, if we go at the current rate, they are gonna be out of cash. And seven quarters may sound like a lot, but that's like mid 2025 they have no more money left if they keep burning at this rate. So that's actually not that much of a window. But there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. They did do a bond offering, um, which raised them about $1.6 billion, which is not re reflected in that $9.1 billion in cash. So they actually have about $10.7 billion in cash, but we're taking on debt. So that's the problem. Um, they can convert that $1.6 billion in debt at $31 per share. But now this is the problem with Rivian is they're taking on debt to improve their cash situation. And as you can see, I think they're gonna be able to pull it off and be fine, um, but I don't know. Like if you look at the balance sheet overall, you can see that uh, if the total assets here going down, the total liabilities going up, this is going in the wrong direction. The balance sheet, the liquidity of the company is getting squeezed. Ten, They only burned a billion in cash last quarter. So 10.6 billion could last them 10 quarters, two and a half years if they only keep burning a billion a quarter. But I think they're gonna need to ramp up that capital expenditure number big time if they wanna get their R2 to market, which is their mass market vehicle, which is gonna actually bring them profitability. So to get to profitability, I think Rivian needs to spend you know, another four or five billion on its factory, but they're also burning a billion a quarter on the normal business. So we're walking this tightrope of the cash is gonna keep going down, they're gonna keep increasing debt, and they're having more and more pressure to get to profitability. So this is so, so fascinating uh, to watch. Diving down a little more into the gross profit per unit delivered, this is a good chart that shows it. When they started production, they were losing so much per unit produced. Now that number's down to just 30,000 per unit produced, which sounds bad, but it's a lot better than the 400,000 they started with. So here is the kicker for Rivian, which I think is a bright spot at the end of the tunnel, the fleet deliveries. So I made a video about their delivery van. You can check that out, but their delivery van produced 400 million in revenue. 30% of revenue last quarter in Q3 was because of these Amazon delivery vans. They just opened up a sale to AT&T to start selling these delivery vans, and they're going to launch a bunch of pilot programs with other customers. So this 80,000, 150 mile delivery van, which they say has the best gross margins at the company, 
could be a huge driver to bump gross margins and to actually accelerate the company's growth and financial situation ahead of the R2 launch. Now, the problem with that is if Tesla launches or someone else launches a van, I think the margins are going to get squeezed. The, the flip side of Rivian saying it's an $80,000 van, we're making great money on it, we're crushing it here, means supply and demand is out of whack. If somebody else comes into the market, I think that's going to massively squeeze the margins on what now looks like an excitingly profitable product for Rivian. So I wouldn't be as bullish on that um, in the long run. And then the real kicker here for their flagship products is the Cybertruck. Tesla has come out with an electric pickup for a little bit cheaper price than Rivian with, I think, arguably better specs than Rivian. I think it looks way more badass. It has, you know, uh, the autopilot, the FSD just a lot of the Tesla ecosystem features, which are frankly really, really a value add for people. Although Rivian can join the supercharger network now, so that's good too. But there's no doubt about it. The electric pickup market is booming. Ford is selling a lot of the Ford Lightnings, but uh, competition is heating up with the Cybertruck entering their market. So I don't know. This is really tough days ahead for Rivian. The bottom line is uh, they are losing a ton of money here. If we look at this overall financial picture, um, their losses of 1.4 billion still outweighing revenue of 1.3. Gross profit is in the red as well. We need to see this turn around in a meaningful way. Otherwise, I don't think the stock's going to do well. Now let's talk about valuation. We're looking at a, a valuation of $22 billion right now. Um, but I actually assume a lot of dilution when I look at Rivian. So the market cap here, it's saying, you know, 23.58 per share. That's a $22 billion valuation. That assumes like 900 something million shares outstanding. I actually think the shares outstanding are going to be, I like to assume over a billion. And they're a little out of whack because of the IPO, but you can see they've been going up and up. You know, 942 million shares in Q3, 952 uh, in Q3 or you know, 942 million shares in Q2, 952 million shares in Q3. So we're going to quickly cross a billion shares outstanding. You talk about adding more debt that could convert into stock. That's going to also accelerate dilution. You want to raise another 2 billion in stock. Bam, that's 10% dilution right there. That could be another 100 million shares. So I think Rivian share count is about to go up uh, significantly as well, or I would price that in if I was thinking about buying the stock. So all in all, overall valuation, you have a company that's making about five and a half billion dollars in revenue, scaling quickly to maybe six, seven, eight billion dollars in revenue. Their market cap, if you assume a little dilution, is about 25 billion. I don't know. I think Rivian is frankly very fairly priced at around $20, $25 per share because you're paying, you know, a lower price sales multiple for a company that could have insane growth potential here. And obviously a lot of rationality happens here, huge hype at the IPO. And then we sort of ease into a more ras rational valuation as the company executes. And while, you know, the company did hit like 10 bucks a share or 12 bucks a share uh, right around here in July uh, last summer. So it didn't hit my $4.20 price target and it may never hit my $4.20 price target, but um, I'm kind of doing, a, I'm a little bit hyped on my victory lap because of like, they're way overhyped. They're going to execute. It's going to be way too hard. The stock's going to crumble. That has all happened. But now it's getting more interesting. If we see another quarter of gross margin improvement, if we see the cash burn get mitigated, they still have a cash cushion. The deliveries of the delivery vans start helping out that gross margin. They can actually hit a positive gross profit in Q4 and the hype for the R2 is there and they can pull off uh, not diluting too much, but being able to invest billions and in getting the R2 off the ground. And I just want to show y'all the R2 real quick. This is my next video on Rivian that's coming out is going to be the, a video all about this R2 concept, the forty dollars to $50,000 car. Um, that's sort of a Model Y Subaru S competitor that is going to be super badass. That This is the car that Rivian needs to... If you're investing in Rivian today, you are investing because of this product. This product, you need to make um, you know, millions. Of, you need them to sell hundreds of thousands of units of this. That's going to justify them becoming a $50 to $100 billion company and making sense investing today. So um, my next video on Rivian is going to be on the R2. Um, the other big question about Rivian here is autonomy. I don't know whether you believe Tesla's full self-driving is going to work or not, whether Rivian has a good system in place, but uh, I don't know. I feel like so much of, of the future of the automotive industry is self-driving cars, and it's going to be really interesting to see how Rivian's strategy lines up there. The other crazy X factor thing to consider, Amazon is a huge owner in Rivian. Amazon owns about 15% of Rivian. They invested in the company. They're buying the delivery vans. I think... Amazon could acquire Rivian. Um, I have made that moonshot before. 
Um, but either way, that's an investor and sort of financial backstop and partner that is really strong for Rivian to have. So that's just an interesting sort of factor at play. But anyway, this is my Rivian stock analysis. Would love to know what you think in the comments. I'm going to keep following this because I think this is a fascinating case study. But my gut instinct is telling me um, the fair value of, or my price target of 420 is never going to be hit. The company has been crushing it in terms of executing. It is not easy to ramp production, but they are still not lean enough. They need to get more profitable. They need to have more hustle. They're on their way, but they need to keep pushing. And it's not going to be easy to walk that financial tightrope in between uh, spending efficiently and investing in the R2. This is HyperChange. Would love to know what y'all think in the comments. See y'all next time.